you've been praying. You've been watching videos about God. And the reason why is because God himself has been leading you to him. He wants you to be a light in this world of darkness. And so it's time, time to seek God like we've never sought him before. It's time to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In our previous episode, The Power of the First Christians, we explored in the Bible how Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. And after he ascended to heaven, he allowed for the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, to be given to anyone who would so desire to receive him. And just like how the Holy Spirit operated with power through the life of Jesus, that same Holy Spirit desires to operate in a powerful way through us. And so one of the greatest things about being a follower of Christ is that not only will you receive eternal life and experience heaven, but while you are alive now, the Holy Spirit wants to use you. He has a purpose for you. And this is one of the reasons he has been leading you to him. This is why you are watching this video right now. This is why you have been seeking him. The Holy Spirit is preparing you for something. Now, it's one thing to just have the Holy Spirit. It's another thing to be filled with the Spirit. And so God is now trying to push his people in the direction of being filled with his spirit. And so what is the difference in having the Holy Spirit versus being filled with the spirit? Well, let's start with Jesus. So first of all, did Jesus always have the Holy Spirit? Well, yes, I would say obviously. In fact, you could argue that the Holy Spirit and the spirit that was within Christ is really the same spirit. You know, we, we know that when the angel told Mary that she would give birth, she was told that this conception would be produced by the Holy Spirit. And ever since the birth of Jesus, he was led by the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was a young boy, he was led to learn more about his father in heaven. In fact, he was teaching his teachers about God because the spirit of God was already working through him. But even though Jesus had the Holy Spirit from birth, the question is, was there ever a point when he was filled with more of that spirit? Well, after Jesus was baptized, look at what it reads in Luke 4, 1. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And so here we see um, when Jesus was being baptized that even though he already had the Holy Spirit, he here reaches this point of being full of the Spirit, which then, as it reads, led him into the wilderness to fast. And of course, after that, he began his powerful ministry. And so basically, we see here an illustration of how one can have the Holy Spirit, but still at other times experience moments of being full of the Spirit. Now, of course, Jesus, being the only begotten Son of God sent into the world, he did not receive the Holy Spirit through conversion because he was born with it. He was just one with it in a way. It was his spirit. However, we have to receive the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus. And just like Jesus, who had the spirit, experienced being full 
of the Holy Spirit? We too, once we receive the Spirit, can also have moments where we experience being full of the Spirit. And there are so many examples of this. Uh, When the Apostle Paul was preaching the gospel in Acts chapter 13, there was this sorcerer there named Bar-Jesus. And Bar-Jesus tried to mislead the people. And in verse 9, it says that Paul, in this moment, became full of the Holy Spirit. And he then made this declaration, which caused the sorcerer to become temporarily blind. And so, you know, here, Paul reaches this point of being full of the Spirit of God, and then the Holy Spirit operated through him in a powerful way. In Acts chapter 7, Stephen was being stoned for boldly declaring uh, the Word of God. And verse 55 says that while being full of the Holy Spirit, right before he died, he was able to see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He experienced a point of being full of the Spirit, which gave him the ability to see things that he normally wouldn't see. And so as you study the book of Acts, you will notice things like this. You will notice many occurrences of how when the people of God reached a point of being full of the Holy Spirit, amazing things happened. In Acts chapter 4, the followers of Christ were praying and they were asking God for boldness and that he would reveal himself through signs and wonders, as it reads. So here they uh, were praying to God and they said, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. And so the believers here, they had already been given the Holy Spirit previously. But in this moment, as they were seeking God, they became filled with the Spirit. And then as it reads, they received boldness. And this is something that we see as we study the book of Acts, that when one is filled with the Holy Spirit, there is this boldness out of this world that comes upon you. And so again, there is a difference in just having the Holy Spirit versus being filled with the Spirit. And we see another good example of that in Ephesians. And so in the book of Ephesians, we see a good example of how even though one can already have the Holy Spirit, they should still seek to be filled with the Spirit. When Paul was writing to the Ephesian church, he wanted them to experience being filled with the Spirit. We see that he wasn't really saying that they should receive the Spirit because they already had the Spirit, but he was writing to them saying that he wanted them basically to reach a higher level of the Spirit. And this is suggested in the text in chapter 1, as it is apparent that they had the Holy Spirit already. Look at what Ephesians 1.13 reads. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, You were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. And so here we see that the Ephesian church were already believers. And when they received the message of truth, the gospel, they were marked with the Holy Spirit. And in chapter four, we see more evidence that they already had the Holy Spirit. Look at what it says in verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And so here again, we see that Paul confirms that, you know, this church he's writing to, that they already have the Holy Spirit. And here he is saying to them that they need to care for the Holy Spirit within them. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He's saying to them that they need to realize that the Holy Spirit has emotions and can be hurt. And Paul is writing to these believers, advising them to stop doing things that hurt the Holy Spirit, but instead to do that which pleases the Holy Spirit. And so this is really a message that God used Paul to write 
to us all. Because it's time. It's time to please the Holy Spirit within us. And in the next chapter, chapter 5, Paul writes to them how they can live in a way that pleases the Spirit of God. He advises them to be wise and to avoid darkness. And in verse 18, he says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So what this suggests is that even after one is sealed with the Holy Spirit and is a part of the body of Christ through faith, as we see the Ephesian church was, there is still a deeper level or filling of the Holy Spirit that can happen. And that is so exciting. Because this means that our journey and experience with Christ can get even deeper. When one experiences being filled with the Holy Spirit, it leads to a greater level of intimacy with God. It leads to greater power, boldness, courage, and being led by God. And the gifts of the Spirit are able to manifest at His will without any hindrance. Every believer should desire to be filled. Now, a big question is, once you are filled with the Holy Spirit, once you reach a point of being full, is it a one-time thing or can it happen repeatedly throughout your life? Hmm. Well, after studying the scriptures on this and looking at the general consensus of biblical scholars and even considering my own experience of walking with God, I certainly lean towards the understanding that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit once. And that can take place as soon as you come to faith in Christ and you ask for his spirit to come within you. But you are able to be filled with the spirit at different levels repeatedly throughout your life. So here's an illustration that I think will help with this. So, for illustration purposes, this is you, and this is God, and the water within is the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Now, when you accept Christ and you ask the Father for his Holy Spirit, then you, just like we saw with the Ephesian church, you become sealed with what? The Spirit of God. You receive his Holy Spirit. He pours himself into you. Now, this is a great, great thing because now you have this uh, new conscience. Um, you have a new sacred presence about you. You don't feel okay doing the same sinful things you used to do. So you, you become new. But even though you receive this initial sealing of the Spirit, we are still called in Scripture to not stop there. We are urged to continue to seek him. We are urged to continue to learn more about him, to study about God, to grow in God. And as we do, guess what happens? Well, like Paul was saying, we become even more filled with the Spirit of God. And it's a beautiful thing. Because what will happen is that as you continue to seek God by, you know, surrounding yourself with others who are seeking God, by watching content about God, like you're doing right now, by reading and studying his word, you are becoming more filled with the spirit of God. And the amazing thing is, if you don't give up and you keep seeking God, oh, eventually you will reach a point of being full of the Spirit. And this is the point that I pray every believer can experience. Because listen, when you are full of the Holy Spirit, that is when chains and addictions that have bound you for years are broken. When you are full of the Spirit, 
That's when you become, as they say, crazy for Christ. When you are full of the spirit, it's like you reach a point when you are so bold that you don't care what anyone says. Your entire mission becomes about representing the kingdom of God. When you are full of the spirit, you get so charged up that you literally can feel the presence of God on you. Sometimes you won't even be able to sleep at night. You will literally feel as if God is going to use you to heal someone. It's absolutely amazing. And some of you out there know exactly what I'm talking about. You may even want to share your testimony of being filled with the spirit in the comments because it's absolutely incredible. And sometimes when you are seeking God with zeal, you will find yourself in a state of overflow where there is so much anointing of the spirit and virtue over you that those who are around you can feel it. And wherever you go, the presence of God impacts the environment. Now, the question is, once you reach a state of being full of the spirit, can you remain that way? Well, remember, Jesus was often full of the spirit and amazing things would happen. In fact, at one point he was walking with his disciples and a lady walked up to him and she touched him so that she could be healed. And he turned around and he said that he felt power come out of him after she touched him. <laughs> Basically, Jesus Jesus was so in touch with his power that he could even feel when it was flowing out of him. And so Jesus, who often was preaching and healing and ministering to others out of his overflow, would sometimes himself need to withdraw from the crowds so that he could refresh and seek his heavenly father. And so even Jesus had moments when he felt drained from the pressures of ministry and from all that was going on. And he would have to withdraw himself and have his private time of seeking his father. Um, he would have his moments where he had to recharge, if you will. And he would pray and he would fast and he would spend time with God so that he could receive what he needed to minister with power to the masses. And so that indicates that the anointing is something that you do have to protect. There can be moments when it is drained either by stresses of ministry and pouring out of yourself into the work that you're doing, but it can also be drained by grieving the Holy Spirit as Paul wrote about. And I know some of you have experienced something similar. Some of you have experienced being full of the Holy Spirit, but maybe now you feel like you've drained it and you know that you have been there in the past. You know what it's like to be full of the Spirit, but you know that you're not really in that state right now. I know some of you feel as if you have grieved the Holy Spirit because of sinful living. And, and so you feel less of his presence now. And so let's let's talk about that. So Paul told the Ephesian church in chapter four to not grieve the Holy Spirit. And some of us know that we have grieved the Holy Spirit. Maybe it was from spending too much time being distracted with entertainment. Or maybe it was from doing some sinful activity. And maybe you have not been seeking God and you wonder if the Holy Spirit is even still within you. Well, I want to give you this encouragement. If you still have a desire to be on God's side, if you still confess that Jesus is your King and your Lord, and you truly have it within you, a desire to please him, then guess what? That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is still within you. He is not finished with you. And so, yes, you might have suppressed his voice and his presence, but he's still there because if he wasn't there, Oh, you would have gone off on the deep end a long time ago. You would have completely turned your back on anything that has to do with God. In fact, if the Holy Spirit was not still there, 
you would not have made it to this point in the video. <laughs> you would have saw that, oh, it's about Jesus, and you would have just turned it off because you didn't want to have anything to do with it. So, my friend, I want to say the same thing to you that Paul said to the Ephesians. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit any longer, but now, now, be filled with the Spirit. Set aside distractions and seek God like never before. Turn off the pornography and any filth that corrupts your mind and turn on content that fires you up for the kingdom. Silence music that promotes sin and listen to music that makes you sing songs of praise to God. Avoid those who make fun of your faith and be among those who encourage your faith and are willing to seek God alongside you. Take a break from reading fiction and read the facts within the Word of God. And as you do this, eventually you will feel it. You will feel the cup of your soul rise as the Holy Spirit pours more of himself within you. And at the right time, he will use you for his purpose and your cup will run over. This is good news. Because whether you have never been full of the Spirit, or if you have been before, but now you feel like you've drained it, the good news is it can happen again. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. So are you ready? Are you ready to be filled? Sometimes we just have to get real with God and say, Lord, I know that your Holy Spirit is within me, but the worries of life have quenched it. The stress and the distractions of this world have caused me to ignore the voice of your spirit. God, I, I haven't been seeking you like I know I should. I've been living in a fantasy world, but I'm done. I'm done. I want more of you. I don't want to be a slave to this body any longer. I want to be a slave to your spirit. Sometimes you just have to get real with God and say, Father in heaven, grant me a fresh feeling of you. Help me to reach a point of being so full of your spirit that all chains of addiction are broken. Allow me to be so full of you that I can be bold for you. Allow me to be so full of your spirit that your power can begin to operate in my life like never before. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of us need to just be real with God and have a prayer like that. And he will give you everything you need to seek him so that he can fill you with more of himself. And so, the journey continues as we talk about something else that will help with spiritual growth. How to fast. Stay tuned. That's coming up next.